Hello, and welcome to Andy Fancher Presents, where today we meet a retired 91-year-old Air Force pilot by the name of John Ferris, who during the final year of World War II flew his B-24 Liberator through 15 aeronautic bomb runs. We meet in his Dallas, Texas home where he recalls training as well as his most frightening mission. This is the one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's a Psalm of David. And that's a good one for us to carry in battle. I was born in Detroit, Michigan, November the 14th, 1924. And after my brother was born, we moved to Briarcliff Manor, New York. But Dad was rather busy moving about doing government work. And we moved to Crestwood, New York, and then we moved to Ardsley, New York. Then we moved to Hastings on the Hudson. But it was while we lived there that the attack occurred on Pearl Harbor. I was a junior in high school. We all had our plans about going to college until the war broke out everybody's plans were changed. The next year, my senior year, opportunities opened in the Air Force for flight training for high school graduates who could pass the academic, the physical, and the medical. So a number of us decided we'd go down and try for that, which I did. And the outcome was I was called into active duty in May of 1943. What did your parents think about you going into the military? They had no choice. We were in a war. What would your mother and dad think of you if you're in a war and you're 18 years old? It wouldn't make a difference what they thought. <laughs> so we started flying school in the fall, and we went down to Albany, Georgia to fly PT-17s, about two and a half months. Then next it was to Greenwood, Mississippi for basic flying school. That was a heavier airplane. And then after that, it was to Napier Field in Dothan, Alabama to fly T-6s. That was a nice little airplane. We were supposed to become fighter pilots, but as it turned out, the war was going along so well, they decided they didn't need any more. So they're gonna put us all into bombers. That's what happened to us. So in the fall of 1944, we went to Massachusetts, west over a field. And then we had our training. The B-24, as it is officially designated, can fly 3,000 miles nonstop. It was quite a sight for us to see when we knew this is what we're flying. We left from there in an army ship that took us to Naples. It was about a 10-day trip. From Naples, we were taken to the local railroad track and they put three crews, 30 men, on a boxcar. It was winter and it was cold then. So we built some fires on the floor and some of the fires went right through the floor. But at least we stayed warm. We came, we arrived at our base down in Lecce, Italy. We were the southernmost flying unit there in the country. We had some practice flying and then we started our combat missions. Our first combat mission, we went in and for the briefing, the commander came in and said, gentlemen, the target for today is Vienna. And there was a groan that went up. Vienna was a tough target. We had about seven or eight airplanes in what we called our box. Whatever number of airplanes you had that would fly, we flew. And that day we had seven or eight. Sometimes you only have five. Depends on how much of a beating you took the day or the week before. And uh, we got our briefing, went out to our airplanes and took off. We had to fly up the north of Italy, over the Alps Mountains, then into our target areas. But we were in threes, and we were one group of threes behind the other. And the lead plane in the first three was shot down. In the second three, it was shot down. And we were the lead plane in the third three. 
Our question was, are we going down too? Well, the Lord preserved us, but the missions went on. Some were difficult, some were not. And we went through the 15 of them out of Italy. We lost some very good friends. As you expect that happens in a war. Then we were told we were either going to move forward or we were going to go to the United States to prepare to fly the B-32. We decided we'd stay in the country and finish our missions. So we went from the 98th Bomb Group to the 465th Bomb Group and we flew just two missions before the war was over. Our last mission was April 25th and Hitler committed suicide a week later. We wish he had favored us a whole lot earlier. Well, I left home, got on the train, went down to Penn Station in New York, bought a newspaper, and there was the announcement the first bomb had been dropped. Swarms of United States aircraft fly in formation overhead as the ceremony ends. The final United Nations victory has been won. The war is over. Peace is here. That marked the end of the war. See, I was young enough where I didn't progress along to get to the combat area until 45. And the war was over at the end of April 45. Mr. Ferris went on to serve 22 outstanding years in the military, being recalled and reassigned to locations all over the world. And finally, in January of 1967, he retired from the Air Force as a major. You have obviously lived quite an eventful life, but when it's all said and done, what do you want to be remembered for? Well, I want to be remembered as one who loved the Lord and lived for God. That's what you need, too. Mm -hmm.